to Auckland, New Zealand, and I, I flew to Bangkok, Thailand. And I've been to Thailand many, many times in my life, but not for the normal reason that single males go to Bangkok. <laughs> and so whenever I leave a hotel, I sincerely go to Bangkok to sweat, to walk down the streets, eat hot food that makes my eyes water, go to the zoo, take photographs of the reptilians, and watch the river go by. No one believes it. Every cab driver is a pimp hustler. They pull over, my friend, get in, get in the cab. I said, no, no, I don't want to get in the cab. I'm like, no, and they shove a notebook at you. You open the notebook, it's laminated pages of nude people that you, it's like a catalog for, for bodies that you can buy. I'm like, ew, these are kids, you are so fucked up. And they think you're just being coy. No, get in the cab, I take you to Patong. You, you get the name sexual act. I'm like, oh! Wow! So I'm a bit of a prude. I'm not, I don't do vulgar. I don't do blue. Uh, I just, it's not for me. I'm like, that is appalling, sir. Take your filthy notebook back and get uh, uh, and run away. And they don't believe me that I, they think I'm just being shy. And so I get out of the hotel on the evening. I land there and I go into the steaming, stinking streets of Bangkok. And I'm walking down the street, a handsome, charismatic, well-built uh, male at a stage in life. And women see me like, my God, there's a date. And like these, these, small prostitutes, these, these beautiful women, run up and throw their arm through mine. And they start walking with me and they said, hey, you want a date? And I, and I, I, I no, I don't. And, and I, I feel the, the need to give them a lecture. I said, get your arm away from me, young lady. <laughs> you are selling your body to men that you don't even know. You are taking their sexual diseases as an import item, and you are exporting your sexual diseases to this man who's going to go back to his wife, his mistress, and the 4-H club, and infect the greater part of Illinois. <laughs> if you keep up this conduct, your labia will turn black and fall out into the street. <laughs> you should be home reading a book. This behavior is appalling, and it will not stand. And these women look at me like I'm such a bore, like, you're not fun. I said, but I'm right. And off I go. And so, and, and so I, I, I flew from there to the place I really wanted to go, which was Laos. I wanted to go to Laos, or Lao, as they call it. And I hired a tour guide who was one of the most energetic and strange people I've ever met. And, uh, he, and he, he's very intense. So he meets me at the airport and he said, I am I. I said, I am I. Wow, that's trippy. I said, well, I am me. <laughs> no, I am I. I said, I got it. I am I too. Wow, this is a, we're getting existential right from the get-go. He said, no, I, and he wrote it down. He said, I, that's his name, is I. It's either A-Y or A-I. He said, I am I. Well, that's your name. Yes, I am I. I said, I'm Henry. Hello, Henry, I am I. He said, I got it, I, I got it. And we became pals. I does not have a whole lot of English at his disposal, but what he's got, he uses it really well. And as we walk down the street, he would get really excited. He's coming up with word equations in his mind, and he would get one, and he would get this wild look on his face, and he would kind of crouch, and he would say the line really loud and kind of lunge at me as he said it. And so by the, by the end of the first day of he and I just walking around the streets, I kind of got used to him. And at 6 a.m. on day two, we get up at like, you know, this early hour to go drive into a place called the Plain of Jars in Xian Quang. It's going to be a nine-hour drive in a van through the mountains. And I stagger into the lobby of the hotel, like barely slept, rolling out of the shower like 5.58. And I wander into the, into the lobby, and there he is, already awake, waiting for me. Which means he's got a word bomb he wants to lay on me. And I walk up, I said, okay, I, lay it on me. And he lunges at me. What's your knife? I said, what? What's your knife? I said, what's my, what's your knife? I said, did you just say to me, what's your life? What's your life? I said, what's your life? What the fuck? But it, it got to me. Like, are you, how did you get in my head? What's your life? Are you evaluating me? What's my life? Well, on what level are we talking about? I, I mean, I, I, I'm decaffeinated right now. You got me in a very vulnerable state. What's my life? I mean, what's my life in comparison to other life? Is a, am I as alive as a blade of grass or an ant? Is my life as valid as the life of a 
pine tree? What's my life? What, what is life, I? Uh, what is anyone's life? I mean, what's my life? Well, I, what, what's my life? It, it's, it's, it's what I think, it's what I know, it's what I value, I. What do you mean? And he said, well, I consider you, hello, Harry, how are you? But that is for me very boring. So I say to you, what's your life? And I said, you know something? I like you. And so we eat, and we get in this van, and we start driving to Zane Quinn to the Plain of Charms. Look it up on the internet, so I think you'll you think it's pretty cool. So we're driving up and down through the mountains, and I'm in the back of this van, on this like long seat. He's got a driver, he's in the front seat, I'm holding on to that, that, that naga hide handle as we go pitching and rolling all over these mountains. And at one point, he turns and looks at me and gives me the look. I'm like, oh no, I got nowhere to go. I said, okay, I lay it on me. Your name is Mr. Curve. I said, what? You are Mr. Curve. I said, we've missed the curve. You are Mr. Curve. I, I said, stop. <laughs> Did you just say to me, you are Mr. Curve? You are Mr. Curve. I said, why am I Mr. Curve? He said, when you get home, your friends will say, hello, Henri. And you will say, that is not my name. I have just come back from Laos. And I was in a van that made many turns all day long. And my name is now Mr. Carl. <laughs> this is, you know, best van ride of my life. And at one point, we pull over. And he hops out of the van, very excited, and rips open the sliding metal door on the side and beckons for me to come out. So I come out, and he come with me, and he points at the woods, like we're driving along some, some, some trees. And I said, do you want me to go with you into the woods? I said, well, okay. I'm a little nervous, but I'm up for anything, I am. So I go into the woods with him, and the driver comes too. And I said, I? What are we doing in the woods? And he says, we are going to put the biologic to the tree. And I had a, like a brochure from a museum in my pocket. It's the only paper I had on me. And I had my pen. And I would put the biologic to the tree. That's great. And I said, what is put the biologic to the tree? Already knowing what that is. So he starts urinating against the tree. So the three of us put the biologic to the tree. And we emerged from the forest back to the van. And so I said, do you have any way to say, you know, pulling down your zipper? And without any hesitation, he said, shoot the rabbit! I said, shoot the rabbit? He goes, shoot the rabbit! I'm like, wow, shoot the rabbit. 